Salutations, everyone. Welcome back to another Total Warhammer 3 guide. I'm Lord Forum. This time, we're going over 10 tips on how to play the Empire better. Tip 1. The Empire is a good all-around faction. They don't have any huge weaknesses, but they also don't have any amazingly good, great strengths. So in order to succeed as the Empire, more than most other factions, you need to build a combined arm army. By that, mean, by that I mean having good infantry in the front, backed up by solid range, backed up by good cavalry, backed up by artillery, backed up by magic users, backed up by strong lords and heroes. It's hard for you to beat any faction in any one field, but you can usually beat them in two to three if we assume there's a large range of like infantry, ranged, ranged cav, cav, artillery, magic, and empire. Uh, lords and heroes, your odds are you're better than them in at least two, if not three of those categories, but you're weaker than them in some of the others. So just be aware of that. Use combined arms, adapt your army to the enemy you're fighting. Certain factions are weak to certain things. The Empire can provide that weakness and exploit it. Tip two, all of the are much better than their stat shows. Now, some people pronounce it differently. That's fine. Regardless, Albadiers are particularly good units for the Empire. Yes, their stats don't seem the most amazing, but they're actually much better than they would seem. They have a bonus first large, they're anti-armor, and they've got really good melee defense. Their biggest weakness is range. Um, however, a mid to late game army for the Empire should have plenty of Albadiers in them, just so that you can handle cav and armor. They don't look like the most amazing unit. You're kind of wondering, how do they do damage? They do. Um, and they will hold a line better than almost any other Empire unit you can put out there. Um, in my opinion, they can even hold a line better than uh, Great Swords, um, which are arguably a superior melee unit. So use them. Use plenty of them. It's not uncommon to even late game armies to have three to four, even five of them in your army just to make up a solid infantry line. There's very few situations where bringing them will not help you. Um, if you're fighting ranged units like Wood Elves, you want shields. Um, and that's one of the few situations where they're weaker. Tip 3. The Empire has a great access to magic more than a lot of other factions, and you should use it. The Empire has access to plenty of different wizards. They've got Amber, Amethyst, Bright, Celestial, Grey, Jade, Light... It, it's unusual for a faction to have access to so many different lores of magic. Um, it means you can kind of customize to what you need. If you want, to, if you're fighting vampires, which if you're in the empire itself, you probably will be. Mages that bring fire to the field are really good. You have an advantage in magic over most factions, which is interesting um, for this faction because it's one of their few areas of high strength. So definitely use magic. It seems a little odd for humans in a fantasy world to be strong, super strong magic users, but they are only matched really by the lizard men and the elves. So use them and counter enemies with them. It's amazing the difference bringing several mages to the battlefield um, adds to the empires. It corrects a lot of the weaknesses the empire has otherwise. Use that. You'll thank me later. Tip four, the Empire has access to extraordinarily powerful artillery and machines as the, the game goes on. Some of the Empire artillery units, mainly their Hellstorm rocket batteries, can absolutely annihilate enemy armies if protected. Same thing with some of their cannons can take out um, anti-large units from immense distance. All their range units have good range, they do plenty of damage. They are obviously vulnerable in melee and expensive, but you have a good um, economy so you can support them. Basically, once you get access to artillery and other war machines, steam tanks bear special mention, um, your army, which formerly struggled to kill enemies and beat the enemies in certain categories, pretty much can shift entirely towards defending your artillery and your machines, and you will get that much stronger. It's a very interesting fact that this faction has an amazingly powerful late game if you can build and use artillery and your other machines effectively. Tip 5. The Empire has a very 
good economy. In fact, their basic economy building, their um, weaving house, pays for itself in two turns, which is the fastest of factions. It's right up there. It's top tier in terms of how much money you get from building it. You should build it everywhere you can. If your settlement survives three turns, that's one turn of profit. Um, and it's already paid for itself, obviously, in two. The downside is they don't necessarily bring in the most money with their economy buildings maxed out, but it's fine. I mean, even their max one pays for itself in three turns. Stick them in every single settlement, especially your minor ones, but even your major ones, can you can almost justify putting it there. Don't forget that their paved roads boost movement, growth, and income, so that's actually even larger. Um, you also have some cool edicts, and some of your lords can improve it. But by and large, their basic income, Industry building is really good. Build it everywhere. Profit. It allows you to support much larger armies than you would expect. Tip 6. You need warrior priests for replenishment. One of the weaknesses of the Empire early game is that they do not have the world's greatest replenishment rate. In fact, they have to build up a lord to the higher levels of their blue line just to get some basic replenishment that other factions seem to have even higher. Their basic economy, uh, sorry, growth building also is not the world's greatest at casualty replenishment. Thankfully, they have a solution. It's called the Warrior Priests of Sigmar. Um, they improve healing. They get it reasonably quickly and easily, assuming you can get to a level three settlement and throw down uh, war, um, a Shrine of Sigmar, at which point you also get flagellants. But the warrior priests make up for that late game replenishment. Um, if you're fighting the vampire counts in um, the empire in particular, you will want um, warrior priests anyhow. Flagellants excel plus corruption control. But by and large, the biggest benefit is that replenishment rate. It allows the empire to not have the world's greatest replenishment, but at least be on par with most factions, um, meaning it doesn't take you like five turns to rebuild your army after battles. Get warrior priests early and use them. Tip 7, and I think this might be the most controversial ones. Try to save or resurrect Elector Counts if you're in the Empire. Now, obviously, there are a couple Empire factions that don't exist in the main Empire. Um, but if you're in the Empire, you've got the really annoying Imperial Authority mechanic that as you lose Elector Counts, things get worse. Later on, you can eventually have a civil war. In my experience, if you ever get to the point of a civil war, the empire is already gone, so it's going to be like one faction attacking you. Um, you want to build it high, you lose it and gain it if the empire counts. Elector counts die, but if you resurrect them, you get it back. Now, don't panic too much. There are ways of gaining other imperial authority from events and stuff. The odds are, for example, up here, Hawkland in particular, it tends to die, as does um, the one right on the Vampire Count's border here. Sterling tends to die as well. Um, you can afford to lose two. Starting to lose three or more is a problem. You want to try and keep them alive, even if it's just in a minor settlement. And in fact, if you're retaking land that's been conquered, or you're conquering it yourself, you have the option to resurrect Elector Counts, get fealty and loyalty. By and large, you should wreck resurrect them at least in one settlement um try and keep them even if it's just a minor one um i like keeping the beckland a la beckland i don't know how to say it uh, alive in kemperbad because it tends to be way more likely for them to survive there than in the rest of their lands um resurrect them it'll give the imperial authority it'll make the game a lot easier don't panic though if they get destroyed um if you lose more than three they'll start to panic Tip 8. Heroes, specifically the Empire heroes, are really good at killing things, um, and they can be recruited at really high levels quite easily for a faction. Now, when I say the, the units are good at killing, it does not necessarily mean they're good at dueling other lords and heroes. But if you look at the Empire captain here, and I will make sure the text is off so you can see it, um, the Empire captain has very good combat stats, and in fact, being armored, shielded with good melee attack and defense is quite capable of destroying infantry units with relative ease. Now, lords and heroes are a weakness, but they're very good at fighting their way through massed units. Same thing for the warrior priests, slightly better at fighting, and they've got spells. But really, in 
complete right up to your witch hunters and even further into your faction with the mages. They're very good at killing things, not good at dueling, meaning you have to use your infantry units to kill enemy lords and heroes. But the empire heroes are extremely solid in melee combat and quite capable of fighting infantry and even cav. Um, it's an odd strength for faction that's otherwise all around, right up there with the magic. You're going to want, in my experience, about three to five heroes in each army. Since you've got a, access to a large range of heroes and you re can recruit them relatively cheaply and easily. In fact, if you've got buildings like Altdorf, you can start to recruit wizards at high levels and lords and empire captains at, up there as well. It's not uncommon to be able to recruit their lords and heroes at rank, rank eight or above, um, meaning you can churn out quite a few immortal heroes after a handful of battles and then you can basically show up to battle with a bunch of immortal lords and heroes and they will do a lot of damage before they go down and then they will come back from the dead and do it again it's quite powerful make sure to use heroes as this faction um more than the other bonuses heroes are a great strength for the empire tip nine and this one might make the biggest difference to a lot of people's campaigns your Basic barracks here, the barracks training field all the way up into barracks barracks, um, only go to level 3. You don't need a high level settlement in order to get to your highest level infantry units. You do need an armory, but that's different. Basically what this means is if you can, you want to put your barracks in your minor settlements, not your major capital settlements. Why? They use up a slot. The Empire has plenty of high-level buildings they want to get in here. Stables, armories, guns, priests, and they also have a handful of elite buildings as well. Plus, you need garrisons. You don't want to use up space in your capital settlements if you can help it. Now, obviously, the risk is then you lose the barracks when the minor settlements fall. That's a risk, but it gives you a chance to get more and better recruitment in a settlement. So try not to build barracks in your capital settlements. Obviously, Altdorf here starts with one and I'll upgrade it to three and wait till I've stabilized the area before I put it in a minor settlement. But in the long run, the plan would be to be destroy this barracks, build it in one of these minor settlements, hopefully one without a resource building. So like over here, Eelhart would be a better choice than Grunberg, which has one. On the other hand, Ubersreich is more protected and less likely to be destroyed from the sea. So it might even go down there, but it has a Landmarks. So really consider where you build them because you want to make sure that every building has every settlement has an economy. So if you start sticking barracks places, you have to lose something. Anyway, make sure you build them in minor settlements rather than your major settlements and build plenty of them because you can get bonuses if you build enough of them. And finally, tip 10, read your unit abilities and stats. Every unit has a purpose in the Empire. They don't really have any superfluous units. Um, they all have a purpose, even if it might not be readily apparent. Um, some of them, like Free Company Militia, are about skirmishing. We'll still be able to kill things. Weak to Cav, but if the enemy doesn't have Cav, a lot better than you'd imagine. Other ones, like why would you use Archers over Crossbowmen? Well, first off, the cost. Um, that's the big one there. Some people wonder why you would ever use Pistoliers. Again, if the enemy can't catch you, type skirmish units are even stronger, and the Empire has a handful of them. Um, these Outriders with grenade launchers, some people go, why would you want grenades? Don't underestimate this unit. It is very strong. Some people why, wonder why you would use Swordsmen. The Empire Swords unit is above average for a level 1 melee unit. Same thing with their Spearmen, which is cheap and strong anti-cap. Every unit has a purpose, it just may take time to figure out. Meaning, go read them, go read their descriptions, read their stats. Some of them, like the flagellants here, have no armor, and you're going, why would you ever use them? Well, they are in fact unbreakable, meaning they will die rather than rout, which has its purpose, especially fighting empire factions like vampires, who also have units that will die where they stand. Read the descriptions, learn the units, because you can always customize your faction to fight the enemy you're fighting. That is the greatest strength of the Empire. More than almost any other faction, they can adapt and overcome by emphasizing strengths and weaknesses of the opponents.
Anyway, that is it for this guide. Hopefully it helps you. If you want a greater explanation, go watch my long empire guide. But I hope this helps. If it did, like, comment, subscribe, you know, all those great things that help people on YouTube. And I will see you in another guide or a Let's Play. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.